Hey everyone, welcome to KSSP Podcast. I'm Spencer. And I'm Katie. And in this episode, we're going to be going over wage slavery, as that's the theme of the day, topic of the day, if you will. In this video, we're going to be going over how does it affect us. And us, mainly we're going to be talking about it from the America perspective, so we got some facts and statistics here about America and the different things in America, I guess. <laughs> so first, we'll go over why salary and wages are important. So salary and wages are important because they are the main source of income used to cover cost of living. Being as salary and wages are the main sources of income for most Americans, we would hope they would lead to economic well-being. What is economic well-being? Economic well-being can be defined as working people having the means to support themselves. So, if we wanted to make the claim that Americans don't experience wage slavery, we'd hope to see that Americans are able to support themselves economically from their wages or salary. Well, let's take a look. First, let's look at minimum wage. The minimum wage was created in 1938. Since its creation, Congress has raised it nine times. The current federal minimum wage in the United States is $7.25 an hour. Currently, there are 30 states and Washington, D.C. who have minimum wages above the federal minimum wage of $7.25 per hour. Now let's look at some stats on income. Gonna adjust here. <laughs> All right. First, we'll look at this article uh, 25 Essential Average American Income Statistics from Zipia. So let's see. The average personal income in the U.S. is $63,214. The median income in the U.S. is $44,225. The average American annual real wage was $67,521 in 2020. I don't know what the real wage is. I don't know what that means, but I think that's something significant. Um, the average U.S. household income is $87,864. The median U.S. household income is $61,937. So about 38% of Americans make under $50,000 a year. And then the rest make over 50,000. So in the United States, the average woman earns a median income of $42,238 while her male counterpart earns $52,004. That's around an $8,000 difference. So here's the US median income by gender. And as we can see, men make more than women in all of these sectors. However, even in similar fields with similar qualifications, women earn 84% of what men earn. There's a huge gap between male and female business owners with men earning 40% more than their female counterparts. In 1979, the average woman earned only 61.5% of a man's weekly earnings. But that was in 1979. Hmm. So Asian Americans earn the highest median income of $87,243. And then it looks like Black people make uh, an average of $41,500,000. Or sorry, $41,500. And then we can look, just look at the chart here for a second. Maybe pause it if you need to. Those between the ages of 45 to 54 earn the highest incomes at a median of $84,464. So this is the U.S. median income by age. So it looks like a bell curve here, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Those between 15 to 24 earn the lowest incomes at a median of only $43,531. Men who work for the federal government have the highest median income of any sector at $68,464. Women who work for the private sector have the lowest median income at $30,040. That's over $11,000 less than their male counterparts and at least $7,000 less than women in any other sector. Okay, so real wage is when adjusted for inflation and the number of goods and services that can actually be bought. We get an individual's real wage. So this is adjusted for everything. So from 1964 to 2018, the average American's real wage has only increased by $2.38. So... When adjusted for inflation, the wage of two fifty in nineteen sixty four would equate to twenty dollars and twenty seven cents. Meanwhile, the average wage of twenty eighteen was twenty two dollars and sixty five cents. So, as of twenty twenty, the average American real wage is sixty seven thousand five hundred and twenty one dollars. And that's actually slightly lower than the average real wage in 2019, which was $69,560. So here are real wages over time. And then the U.S. has the six highest real wages in the world. They're behind Denmark, Australia, Sweden, Norway, and Luxembourg. So as of 2020, 11.4 Americans live below the poverty line. There are approximately 37.2 million Americans living in poverty. The poverty rate for households in the U.S. is 4.7%. And from 2010 to 2019, the poverty rate steadily dropped from 15.1% to 10.5%. However, there was a sharp uptick from 2019 to 2020 when it increased to 11.4%. So, okay, 52% of Americans are considered middle class, while 29% are considered lower class and the smallest percent, 19%, are considered upper class. So middle class constitutes any income between 42000 and 126000 The top 10% earn 30.2% of the total income in the U.S., whereas the bottom 90% earns 69.8% of the total income. And so there's like obviously a huge divide there. Okay. So from 2014 to 2020, the average median household income increased from $55,613 to $67,521. And then from 2014 to 2020, the real median income raised by 13%. Wages are expected to grow by 3% between 2021 and 2022. Unfortunately, this number doesn't keep up with inflation, which has grown by 6.2% in 2021, and is expected to grow further in 2022. In fact, overall wage growth hasn't strayed much further from 3% in several years, despite inflation. So here, I'm just going to show this. I'm not going to show all the numbers, but the average American income by state, blue is the highest and red, dark red is the lowest. Median household income gives us a picture of what the typical household actually earns over the course of a year. So here's some highlights of income in the U.S. So these numbers might be a little, slightly different, it looks like. Uh, real median household income was $70,784 in 2021, not statistically different from the 2020 estimate of $71,186. Based on the Money Income Gini Index, income inequality increased by 1.2% between 2020 and 2021. This represents the first time in the Gini Index has shown it as an annual increase since 2011. 
Between 2020 and 2021, the change in the number of total workers is not statistically different. However, there was an increase of about 11.1 million full-time year-round workers from approximately 106.3 million to 117.4 million, suggesting a shift from working part-time or part-year in 2020 to full-time year-round work in 2021. The real median earnings of all workers, including part-time and full-time workers, increased 4.6 percent between 2020 and 2021, while median earnings of those who work full-time year-round decreased 4.1 percent. Real median post-tax household income in 2021 was not statistically different from 2020. In contrast to the 1.2 percent increase in the Gini index using pre-tax income between 2020 and 2021, the annual percent change in the Gini index calculated by post-tax income was not statistically different. Next, let's look at the cost of living. So let's look at some budgeting stuff. All right, so we've got a median in household income of $63,179 or, or $5,264 a month. $23,000 is the average amount millennials have saved for retirement. That's surprising. I don't have anything saved for retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. So $1,709. Average total monthly cost for housing, including property taxes. $295,300. Median home price as of June 2020. 34.62 average portion of total income spent on housing. $59,060 median down payment for homes nationwide as of June 2020. So we've got $550 for a new car payment, $333 for ride sharing services, $176 for gasoline and fuel costs, and $119 for car insurance payment. So we have an increase in health care. In 2015, it was $362 per month for health care. In 2018, it's $414 per month. That's a 14.7 percent increase in just about three years. So child care, $453 is the average monthly cost per child for full-time infant daycare in Mississippi, the least expensive state. In the most expensive state, Massachusetts, it is $1,743. Other things we spend on each month on average, groceries and dining, $660, subscription services, $237, Clothing and shoes, $155. Cell phone bill is $94 and $58 for a gym membership fee. So, all right. A monthly budget for someone making $7.25 an hour working 40 hours a week is $1,160. And the monthly budget for someone on $15 an hour's wage is $2,400. But to maintain the monthly budget we've mentioned, uh, that would be $4,140 a month or $49,680 yearly. And this is not including, including the child care. So even a $15 an hour wage isn't high enough anymore. And, well, sure, people may now be claiming that minimum wage wasn't meant for people to live off of, but is that statement or is their claim true? Well, let's start with what was the purpose of the minimum wage. So the purpose of the minimum wage was to stabilize the post-depression economy and protect the workers and the labor force. The minimum wage was designed to create a minimum standard of living to protect the health and well-being of employees. As mentioned earlier, the establishment of a minimum wage first occurred in 1938 with the passing of the Fair Labor Standards Act. This act ensured that employees should be paid a minimum amount for the labor they perform and was passed to prevent employers from paying their workers next to nothing for long hours and often dangerous working conditions. From its inception, the minimum wage was meant to be a living wage. Families should be able to live off of the pay comfortably rather than struggling paycheck to paycheck. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt was a major proponent of the living wage, saying that by living wages, I mean more than a bare subsistence level. I mean the wages of a decent living. Well, 
Now you may be thinking the minimum wage has been increased, so they're fine. But has it been enough? While worker productivity has risen over the years, growth of real wages and income has been slow or stagnant for most working people for most of the last four decades. Low wage workers saw their wages rise only 3.3%, median workers saw their wages rise 15.1%, and lo and behold, high wage workers saw their wages rise 63.2% in the last four decades through 20, 2019. And let's not forget about our friend inflation. People paid the federal minimum wage have seen a 30% fall in an inflation-adjusted earnings over the last 50 years. So, Americans suffer pay cuts as inflation rises. We're going to look at some statistics. So, Americans suffer pay cut as inflation outpaces wage growth. Year-over-year change in real and nominal earnings and the consumer price index of the U.S. So, the orange line is the consumer price index. The blue line is the average hourly earnings, and the green line, the green bar rather, is the real average hourly earnings. So earnings for all employees on private and non-farm payroll, seasonally adjusted. So basically this means that inflation is rising faster than our wages are, if I'm going to sum it up. And salary increases do not keep up with inflation. Let's see what Forbes has to say about it. Well, there's been a, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported a 7.9% increase in the consumer price index. The overall average salary increase over the same time period was 3.4%, which is less than half the current inflation rate. Inflation and salary increases are not the same. Well, that's one reason. Another, so wages are sticky. Um, wage increases are sticky, meaning they tend not to go down unless significant structural issues are present. Because wages are difficult to reduce if markets deteriorate, companies are slow to raise wages before determining long-term implications. While layoffs and, so during COVID, while layoffs and lower annual bonuses reduced aggregate compensation levels, the salaries of remaining employees did not decrease. Okay, reason number three, pre-pandemic salary budgets already began to reflect labor market demographic changes. Job changes, the rise in starting salaries and benefits do not appear in annual salary budgets. Companies are investing in flexible employee programs and culture to su supplement fixed pay. Those are the five reasons Forbes gave. So it seems pretty clear that unfortunately, a lot of Americans may fall under the definition of being a wage slave. But that doesn't mean there aren't things we can do to help change the system for better, to make it better, a better system for everyone. And we'll go over some of those in our next video. So make sure, well, hopefully we'll see you there in that next video. But if not, for whatever reason, just leave a comment below letting us know what you want us to discuss in future episodes. You can reach out to us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And we occasionally go on Twitch live streams. So uh, look out for us there. And don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow. And turn on notifications so that you get notified of our live streams or future content. Otherwise, we will see you all in the next video.